we have our failures with uh, with the food industry, and now we are doing this. Hmm. Kind of crazy how that works, but it's whatever. Anyway, today we're reacting to catastrophic bridge failures explained. How they basically happen overall. Judging by this, this is all bridges that just fell apart through major accidents, major seismic activities, and so on and so forth. Or, I don't know, got terrorized. I, I, I don't know. Exactly what kind of failures, but it, this is going to be a thing. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this reaction video, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button, support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button, be notified immediately when your video comes out. And uh, if you have any videos you would like to recommend, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll write to as soon as possible. And if you want to see the original video and see all this other stuff that they, this creator has <laughs> down in the description below. And the link to this video is going to be there. Other than this, let's start this video. This is going to be a bit of a long one. We've all seen bridge collapses in the movies. Triggered by earthquakes, destroyed by tsunamis, cracked by the Kraken. Yeah, the point is only mega forces of unstoppable power can bring these things down. But have True. you ever seen actual footage of one? Because actually it doesn't take a giant monster to cause a collapse, which when you think about it is way more terrifying. From blatant design oversights to accidents caused by corruption, it's time to take a look at some real life bridge failures and the reasons they collapsed. Quick, someone get the rock on standby. There's most definitely a disaster movie waiting to be made in this. I mean, not wrong. He had some killer movies about disasters. Harmony Ridge Trestle. Bridges in films tend to collapse after being shaken down or swept away. But what about going up in flames? Well, back in 2013, that's exactly what happened to the Harmony Ridge Trestle Bridge in Central Texas. Now that's something you don't see every day. This 900 foot long wooden trestle bridge that crosses over the Colorado River was built back in 1910. And despite being more than 100 years old, it was still an active section of the Heart of Texas Railroad, key for transporting goods from the nearby town of Brady. But the issue with wooden bridges built to withstand dry rural conditions is that the wood making of the bridge needs protection. And 100 years ago, that solution came in a can of creosote, a kind of coal that oh. preserves timber and protects it against insects and fungi. The only problem is, creosote is also incredibly flammable, flammable, which meant that when firefighters were called out to a small fire near the bridge back in May 2013, what they were confronted with by the time they got there was 900 feet of fiery timber. They tried to extinguish the flames, but 20 minutes after they arrived, this happened. Hmm. Looks like that bridge is out of commission. That is the most dangerous game of dominoes I've ever seen. The weight of the iron train tracks on top forced one of the burned out pillars to collapse, which in turn dragged down the next one and the next one until none of them were left standing. Firefighters spent a further 15 hours trying to put out the flames, but fighting against all that creosote was impossible. Instead, they contained it and let it burn out on its own. While it's still not known what exactly started the fire, it's estimated to have cost a staggering $10 million to rebuild. Ooh. This time around, they used materials that are a little less, you know, flammable. The Hassanabad Bridge. The Karakoram Highway is okay, one of the fair. most scenic and famous roads in East Asia, spanning more than 810 miles and connecting great cities like 
Abbottabad, Dasu, and Gilgit to the Chinese border. But back on the 10th of May, 2022, traffic came to a standstill in one of the most mountainous stretches, a section of the Hassanabad Bridge, an essential link between the northern areas of Pakistan and the rest of the country, had vanished. It didn't seem possible. The stone and concrete bridge built back in 1972 had stood solid for over 50 years. What could have made such a huge section of it disappear without a trace? It didn't take long before footage began to emerge online, revealing what had happened a little further upriver. Is that blood? Where's that landslide? Holy moly. It turned out that heat waves sweeping the nation with record high temperatures of up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit had triggered the nearby Schiesberg Glacier to melt at an unprecedented rate. Oh! Created an ever-growing lake in the mountains throughout April. It may not look big from up here, but that's covering over 33 hectares. That's more than 61 football fields worth of water. As the ice kept melting oh. long before the lake flooded and water raced down the Hunza Valley tributary. And that's when it met the Hassanabad Bridge. Oh. Oh. You can see the onslaught of water almost immediately eroded the shoreline where the bridge had one end of its foundations set. The more the earth holding the foundations was eroded, the more exposed the foundations became. Until the what happened to the back of it? To the one, I mean, the end of the bridge seriously? What happened to the back of it? Wow, that looked insanely powerful. Remind me never to if it was like with a glacier. fixed, then I might have survived. Glass fiasco. This is probably a good time in the video to point out that I'm no fan of heights. Bridges freak me out enough, but glass bottom bridges? That is not my idea of a good time. Uh. have become incredibly popular across China in recent years, ranging in height from tens of feet to a staggering 1,180 feet high. In 2016, it was around 60, but oh. in the day, there were more than 2,300. The only problem is that up until 2018, there were no specific legislations or technical requirements glass bridge constructors had to adhere to. All visitors had to know that, that uh... they were, safe were PR demonstrations like driving cars over these bridges or volunteers trying and failing to crack the strengthened glass with sledgehammers. But it wasn't the strength of the glass that failed back in 2021. On May 7th, then what was a tourist was crossing a 328 foot high glass bridge in China's Jilin province during a gale with wind speeds. Oh, uh, that would hour. explain it. Already, this sounds like a supremely dumb move. But then, all of a sudden, almost all of the glass panels were blown off the bridge. Stranded in the middle, oh. the tourist held on to the railings for more than 40 minutes before eventually crawling to safety. Oh, I do not envy that guy even a little bit. It seemed the constructors had failed to secure the glass to the bridge itself, relying on the weight what? of it to keep it down instead. So, when the wind picked up, each pane was simply blown off. In 2018, technical standards were released stating glass bridges should be closed during bad weather. Apparently, the owners of this bridge missed that memo. Well, it's since reopened, and no further cases of blowaway panels have been reported. Okay. Great. You still can't convince me to step foot on a single one of them, though. I prefer not having my body scooped off the floor like a horrible pancake. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can't fault him for that. That just, that just looks too sketchy. A structural engineer with the most famous and hilarious bridge failure in history is, they'll all probably say, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster. Opened over the Tacoma Narrows Strait, obviously, in Washington back in 1940, 
The suspension bridge once spanned nearly 6,000 feet, and though it was narrow, it was just wide enough for two lanes of traffic and sidewalks on either side. Sounds perfect, right? Well, not quite. Take a look at what happened when the wind exceeded 35 miles per hour. Uh, oh. Yeah, that... Um. So not normal that less than six months after it opened, this happened. Oh my gosh. Luckily, people heard the concrete cracking before it collapsed, giving them enough time to flee their cars and run off the bridge. No one was hurt, save for one man's cocker spaniel, Tubby, who was too terrified to leave the car on the bridge when it collapsed. R.I.P. Tubby, you were a real one. But let's back up a second. You don't see other suspension bridges, like the Golden Gate, trying to imitate the shape of a Twizzler. So what the heck Pin happened here? Well, in most suspension bridges, I was about to like these, the quick. trusses are built onto the main stretch. But these are large metallic frames that are designed to break up the flow of wind, allowing wind to pass through the bridge instead of batter against it. Now, I'll give you one guess what wasn't built into the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Yep. What? Trusses. Instead, the H-shaped girders separated the flow and created wind vortexes which matched the sway of the main span of the bridge, an effect known as aeroelastic flutter, which gradually increased in power. Basically, the bridge's twisting in the wind induced more twisting. And then, on November 7th, battling with 42 mile per hour winds, the bridge finally took a twist too far and collapsed under the strain. Disastrous, yes, but hey, we learned that the ideal suspension bridge design is not, in fact, Twizzler-shaped. Who knew? Puerto Rico I... PR-123. Do you remember the devastation oh, no, that the be funny. Category 5 Hurricane Maria caused back in 2017? Kind of? The most intense tropical cyclone I of the barely year, remember it. Wind speeds of more than 175 miles per hour. And Maria was not playing around when it hit Puerto Rico. The entire population lost electricity, and the majority lost access to clean water. The storm was so powerful, it was lifting up entire cars in the street. Infrastructure across Puerto Rico was decimated, including a bridge built back in 1947 over the Rio Grande de Arcibo. Once the hurricane had died, down, hey. a temporary bridge was installed in its place. These but it went bad. These are bridges that aren't designed to be long-term fixes. Rather, they're cheaper solutions that can be installed quickly to re-establish essential travel across a country. Though they're designed to last as long as 75 years under the right circumstances. Puerto Rico installed several of these across the country following Hurricane Maria, including PR-123. Okay. Each of which cost just $800,000. There were plans to build more permanent bridges once the country uh -huh. recovered. However, exactly five years later, in September 2022, Puerto Rico was dealt another blow. This time by Maria's sister, Hurricane Fiona. In some Hurricane areas, Fiona got a whopping three feet of rain in just 72 hours, leading to torrential floods, which, as you can imagine, quickly overpowered the temporary bridges, like PR-123. Oh. I would be terrified of that. Dang, it's striking its port along with it. Pressure of the water literally snapped the entire structure in half. Did you hear that cracking? Yeah, these bridges weren't meant to withstand raging tides. Another temporary bridge has since been installed, but it's anyone's guess as to how long that one will last. Bear Creek Collapse when you get married, there are hundreds of things that might go wrong on the big day. 
Your cake might not arrive. The best man might lose the ring. The true and true. On the way to the venue might give out without any warning. Wait, what was that last one? Yeah, that would be the last one that I think anyone would have predicted. Someone call the priest. We're gonna need him. This Alaskan couple were driving down to Palmer for their wedding, but as they reached Bear Creek, they noticed a violent flash flood. These are floods which occur when there is a sudden excess of water that's accumulated upstream from either ice melt mm -hmm. or rainfall. In this case, the flood was so torrential that it ripped through the riverbeds and banks. The bridge sections themselves over the creek didn't appear to be badly damaged, but the water washed away the earth supporting the asphalt road leading up to the bridge, which then collapsed. So, despite what it looks like, technically the bridge didn't collapse. The road did. Not sure that's exactly comforting to the couple on their way to get married. They ended up having to double back, Trill. taking a detour that added an extra four hours onto their journey. Technically, the bridge is supposed to be road, though so not really. China's corruption I, I don't know for sure. Back in the 1990s, China saw an economic boost like no other. Thanks to market reforms, a huge building boom swept the nation. The government greenlit hundreds of construction projects, with many bridges among them, to improve connectivity within the country. It was all going so well. Until April 2011. At 5 a.m., a section of the Korla Peacock River Bridge in Xinjiang failed, plunging a chunk of roadway into a riverbank. Thankfully, no one was hurt. But then in July, less than two months later, the Tongyu River Bridge in Jiangsu collapsed. And then three days later, another Chinese river bridge fell apart. This time, Dang, what's up with all these bridges in China just in Fujian, falling apart? The second time this particular bridge had collapsed. Three collapses in one year definitely wasn't good news. But it was about to get worse. In August 2012, a recently built 130 mm -hmm. foot section of an entrance ramp to the Yangmingtan Bridge in the city of Harbin suddenly overturned. <sighs> the bridge had cost $300 million. It actually took the thing and flip it? In November 2011, less than a year before. Dang. So many bridge collapses in such a short space of time sparked panic. The government initially said overloaded trucks were to blame. But the terrifying truth of the matter was that the bridges all across China had actually been collapsing long before 2011. Back really? Back in July 2007, a section oh. of the Jiang Bridge in Guangdong Province was hit by a boat, which resulted in a section collapsing into the river. Though it should have been How did the boat hit damage. it? In August 2007, an overloaded truck caused a bridge to collapse in Taiyuan, Shangqi. A few months later, in October 2007, the viaduct of the Minsu East Road in Baotao suddenly capsized, flipping just like the Yangmingtan Bridge entrance ramp after several overloaded trucks had apparently used it. And then in 2009, mm. a 2,600-foot off-ramp bridge at the Gangtang Toll Station on the Jinjin Expressway collapsed, with overloaded trucks once again taking the blame. So this wasn't a new problem. Mm. One that had been ongoing for years. That's one well understanding. Question. Why were brand new, state-of-the-art, multi-million dollar bridges collapsing when a few overloaded vehicles used them? Or when they were lightly damaged? Well, according to the Chinese Court of Public Opinion, the only answer was corruption. In 2016, transport official Chen Miangxian was charged with illegally accepting $4.4 million in bribes to divert hundreds of construction contracts to companies that used low-grade building materials. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. 84% of the 12,759 bribery cases prosecuted in China between 2014 and 2017 related to construction projects. Low-grade materials and rushed completion dates had left new bridges crumbling within the first few years of their erection. 
and it's still having an impact to this day. In December 20, I mean, not wrong. A 1,640 foot section of the Wuhuang Expressway overturned in a manner all too similar to the 2000s bridge flips. One truck was accused of carrying nearly 200 tons, 400% more than the expressway allowed. That would mean it was carrying cargo that weighed the same as this mining truck. Oh. The bridge itself was barely okay. old, so it would seem these bridges have been built to subpar standards or constant repetitive use of overloaded trucks on these bridges really did cause their collapse. Personally, I think it might be a bit of both. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. The I-35W. I-35W. was the only country to suffer crippling bridge collapses back in 2007. Over the sea in the USA, Minnesota to be precise, August 1st was shaping up to be another very normal day. But at 6.05 p.m., right at peak rush hour, disaster struck. The I-35 W bridge over the Mississippi River what? suddenly gave way, and it wasn't just one oh. section or a part of it. All one thousand sixty-four feet of the main span fell some one hundred fifteen feet into the river and banks below. From above, the scene looked utterly bizarre. Water levels in the river were low, so the fractured segments laid out end to end looked more like a Google map glitch over a typical bridge collapse. How could such a huge span of a single bridge collapse all at once? True. That, what Minnesota does that? legislature quickly assembled a committee to investigate, but it wasn't until January 2008 that they finally got some answers, and not the ones they liked. The heart of the issue wasn't down to something affecting the bridge, but the bridge's original design. The original design on one half inch thick steel gusset plates that were 30 feet wide and 20 feet high to connect each girder of the truss at node points. When it was first opened back in 1967, it was deemed safe for trucks carrying the maximum legal load of 80,000 pounds. But over time, this was increased to 136,000 pounds for overweight vehicles, as it was deemed the bridge could handle it. The only problem okay. was that the gusset plates were actually too small to handle such an increase in weight. And so, gradually, they started to fracture. To make matters worse, at the time of the collapse, construction equipment weighing in at over 578,000 pounds was resting above the bridge's weakest node. And then to add a final nail to the coffin of this design, over the years, an additional two inches of concrete had been added to the road, increasing the bridge's structural load by a whopping 20%. Small signs began to show that this was taking its toll on the plates, with inspectors noticing the plates bowing ever so slightly back in 2003. But nothing was done. So, oh, that's just lazy work. 2007, under all that weight, the gusset plate at the weakest node gave way. Investigators later found not one, not two, but eight of these gusset plates had then fractured, leading the way to the full collapse of the main span. Over the next 10 years, 172 of the state's 20,000 bridges would be repaired or replaced to prevent this from ever happening again. Kind of their fault for just ignoring it on October 1st, for so long. Disaster struck Taiwan's Nanfangao fishing port. The 460 foot bifurcated single arch bridge, which had been completed back in 1998, okay. was over the mouth of the harbor and seemed as solid as ever. Seems so like a sketchy place to put a bridge, but it, and the entire bridge bent bent out. suddenly warped and collapsed 60 feet into the waters below. <laughs> oh. That's not pretty. Almost all of the 13 steel tendon cables attached to the steel troughs in the roadway, which supported the weight of the bridge and road, suddenly snapped. 320 tons of steel and concrete and an oil tanker crashed some 60 feet into the water below. 
Two days after the crash, an investigation was launched. Initially, officials questioned whether a typhoon and earthquake, which had struck the area the day before, had anything to do with it. But the experts... No, I don't think it's going to be that the bit. ...had stood for 20 years and withstood many typhoons and earthquakes. There had to have been something more going on beneath the steel and concrete. And they were right. Engineers discovered water had been leaking into the steel troughs that anchored the tendons to the roadway, which didn't have any drain huh. holes. Salt water from the sea collected in these anchor points, gradually corroding them and weakening the entire structure. The tendons were so big oh, that in some explain. places that cross sections revealed the tendons were just 22% functionable. When the first cable gave way, the next, which was just as badly corroded, also failed, with each tendon falling in turn like dominoes. To make matters worse, there were no inspections carried out on this part of the bridge, so this fundamental design problem went uh. for almost 20 years. After this discovery, every last bridge across Taiwan, reliant on cable supports, was checked for corrosion. Well, for all the faults, at least something good came out of this disaster. I suppose, but... Since the 1970s, Seoul, the city of South Korea, has witnessed a boom in construction projects. New complexes, districts, and skyscrapers... Okay, sprawling this is sounds good. Concrete ...jungle, spanning both sides of the Han River. But one of its most revered developments left a deep scar in the country's collective memory. The Seongsu Bridge Disaster. Completed in 1979, after a little over two years of construction, the four-lane bridge was opened at a glorious 63 feet wide and 3,810 feet long. So, okay. half that of the Golden Gate Bridge, but still long compared to previous bridges built across the Han. And unlike those well, bridges, can't just it's agree. Gerber Truss Engineering, with steel trusses, making up some 2,200 feet of its overall length. At the time, it was hailed as an architectural marvel. But in the morning rush hour of October 21st, 1994, the unthinkable happened. Without warning, Bruh. a 157-foot section suddenly collapsed while traffic was crossing it, falling 65 feet into the water below. It was the dry season, so with the water level being around 10 feet, the bridge segment didn't sink. The dramatic scene sent shockwaves through South Korea. Initially, the government was quick to blame overloaded vehicles for the collapse, but the truth didn't take long to come out when engineers inspected the bridge's remains. The Gerber truss design relied on a series of pins and welds to hold the suspension segments of the bridge in place. It was discovered that the weld mm. of the collapsed section in the original design was meant to be cast through the gap in the beams. But because of some lax construction standards, it only coated the sides of the connecting beams. On the surface, they looked fine, but fatigue cracks developed around the weak weld. Okay, so like... Combined with the fact that inspectors couldn't visualize... So like, the damage, uh... Meant that the damage went... That one with the many bolts. Years. Got it. It was at these joints that stress fractures developed eventually leading to the doomed section snapping and dropping on October 21st. Bad welding and shoddy inspections were to blame, turning this architectural marvel into an architectural nightmare. Ponte Morandi Bridge At this point, we've gone through a lot of different reasons why bridges have collapsed, with negligence sure. being the leading factor. But very few, if any, Compared to the level of negligence that contributed to Genoa's Ponte Morandi Bridge collapse back in Ponte Morandi Bridge, a 3,900 foot viaduct over the Polcevera River, railway lines, and buildings beneath, it connected two okay. sides of one of the city's many valleys. Completed back in 1967, the bridge suffered a lot of issues from the get go. The cable stayed designed was characterized by its use of pre-stressed concrete, that is, concrete that has been compressed during production to strengthen it. The only problem was that concrete wasn't strengthened enough, meaning it was susceptible to cracks 
water damage, and corrosion. By the 1970s, the bridge required constant maintenance because the creep of the concrete, that is, deformation of the concrete under sustained load, was so bad the vehicle deck was warped in all three dimensions. Then in the 1990s, it was found that the mm -hmm. tensions in Pillar 11 were massively corroded. Yeah. It was reinforced with external steel cables, but none of the other pillars were checked for this internal corrosion. In 2011, a report highlighted accelerated oh. of the bridge caused by heavy use. By 2016, the Italian parliament had been informed multiple times that the bridge needed maintenance. As if they fix the it? Point of failing. But nothing was done. In 2017, oh. an even more specific report anticipating the failure was released, noting anomalies in Pillar 9. Although it wasn't until June 2018 that ministers approved the works needed to fix it, costing some 20 million euro, about 22 million dollars. And even when they did, there was doubt that the work would start before the summer for fear of impacting all the tourist traffic. It was delay no. after delay after delay until the option no. of delay was taken out of their hands completely in the worst way possible. On August 1st, a crack in the road on the bridge was reported, but as you probably guessed, nothing was done. There was no call to reduce oh, no. the vehicles on the bridge, and it wasn't closed. Then on August 14th, 2018, during a torrential rainstorm, a giant 690-foot section of the Ponte Mirandi Bridge, with many vehicles on it and the area, fondly referred to as Little Brooklyn, flattened underneath it. The company responsible for maintaining the bridge, Atlantia, claimed that a okay. landslide was to blame. But then CCTV emerged, showing that it was none other than Pillar 9 which gave way, and there was no landslide in sight. With such a troubled past and flawed design, it was eventually decided that the bridge would not be repaired, and the remnants were instead demolished in June of 2019. They couldn't even salvage it. They had to destroy it completely, huh? Oh. Oh, I hope no one's building got hit. Luigi Di Maio made it clear that Atlantia was, in fact, to blame. A toxic mix of negligence, incompetence, and politics eventually ended up costing Atlantia more than 3.4 billion dollars in Ooh. all disputes. And that's just the bill so far. Though if you ask me, there's not enough money in the world that can make up for that level of negligence. Yeah, there isn't, really. Which of these bridge failures did you think was the worst? Let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just the last bridge that I have to say was the biggest failure of all. Not due to the bridge itself, but more of the people who are in charge of the bridge. It's been repeated over and over and over and over again. They had signs, they had proof, they have witness reports, they had all this and all that. But they decided not to do anything. They didn't fix anything, they didn't modify anything to better support the bridge or anything like that. They kept it the same. No drainage pipe, no nothing. They just made this bridge the worst. I'm surprised it even lasted that long. Because that is freaking stupid on how much they failed to keep that bridge in better condition. 
it, it's like mind blowing that they failed that bad. <laughs> and even then, they had to destroy the bridge, pay for the lawsuit, and probably have more stuff to pay for when it came to that bridge. Because that kind of damage is not something that should ever happen. Especially when you have so much evidence and proof that something's wrong with the bridge and you decide to ignore it altogether. They deserve that fine. They deserve any problems they have. Because that was not an okay way to go about this. Stupid. Uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button be notified immediately when your video comes out. And tell me which bridge do you think is the one that... Uh... Well... Tell me which one do you think is the worst bridge overall. I, I still say it was the last bridge in this video because that, that was definitely not okay. But yeah, go ahead and tell me what you think in the comment section below. And the link to this video will be down in the description below. So if you want to see the video that was reacted to, go ahead and look in the description. Other than this, hope you all enjoy. I'll see you all next time. Bye.